Hey everyone, what's going on? I'm seeing back with another fragrance video. Thank you for joining me. Today I'm going to be doing a review from the house of Zenga. The fragrance I'm reviewing today is Indonesian Oud. Indonesian Oud was released in the year 2012 and is classified as an Oriental Woody. This fragrance is part of a collection of uh, four other fragrances, so five fragrances in total from this collection, which was created by Zenga to em embody the values of the company, which are passion, commitment, and vision. So, in this collection, all five fragrances share one note in common, and the note that they all share is the note of Calabrian Bergamot. One interesting thing to note about the Calabrian Bergamot is the fact that Zenga actually owns the harvest of the Bergamot that's used in every single fragrance in this collection. All fragrances uh, contain the note of Calabrian Bergamot, however, every single fragrance in the collection has a different composition. So, with Indonesian Oud, what are the other four fragrances in the collection? You're going to get Italian Bergamot, you're going to get Sicilian Mandarin, Javanese Patchouli, and you're going to get Florentine Iris. Uh, the other four, I've smelt them when I was back in Leeds a few months ago uh, in a, a store, I think it was John Lewis. Uh, or Harvey Nichols, that's where I was. Harvey Nichols, a fantastic place. If you're ever in the UK and you're in Leeds, then visit Harvey Nichols. It has some great selection of uh, of fragrances, both uh, designer and niche. And the sales assistants there were really, really helpful, actually. Uh, not like the sales assistants you get in Selfridges, which are really mean to me sometimes, and think that I'm just one of those typical Asian roadmans that come in there to spray themselves and go home. They actually don't know that I'm a massive fan of fragrances and they actually know my shit as well. So that out of the way, let's talk about Indonesian Oud. So what are the notes of Indonesian Oud? You're gonna get rose, you're gonna get Oud, amber, patchouli, and of course the Calabrian bergamot. So those were the notes and a little bit of a background regarding Indonesian Oud, but what do I really get on my skin? For me, when I was first spray on Indonesian Oud, it really hits you in the face. First time I sprayed this, I was shocked. The oud in this is not like any other oud you're gonna find in many of the oud fragrances you find in Western perfumery today. This one is ganky, it's animalistic, it's quite funky guys. It's so different and I absolutely love it because it's so unique. It's a very, very animalistic oud. It's not one of those clean, easy to wear ouds. You know like oud wood from Tom Ford? It's a complete opposite. This is quite a, like I've said, this is animalistic guys. As the fragrance develops, the oud is still prominent, but then you're introduced to this rose. Now this rose to me is quite wet and it's quite light. And for me, the rose is really in the background. The oud is definitely the most prominent part of this scent. The oud also has quite a medicinal feel to it as well. The rose that I get, imagine the rose, uh, it's like you're holding a rose and rainfall has just happened and there's uh, raindrops in the rose. That's what it feels like. That's what I get when I'm smelling this scent. The rose is quite wet and quite light. Now, the oud as well is quite wet as well and it's quite... It has this wet sort of feel to it and it's quite moist. And I really feel this may be down to the Calabrian bergamot. As the fragrance develops, the oud still the most prominent part of the scent, but in the dry down, it's joined by this absolutely amazing patchouli. Now the patchouli and the oud blend well together, and I'll get this really earthy and quite dirty feel from the notes uh, in the dry down. The, f uh, the feeling that I get is this really moist, earthy sort of feel. Imagine yourself walking in a rainforest in, say, Assam, Cambodia, uh, Thailand, or Indonesia. You're walking in the rainforest and it's actually rained and it's quite moist, the earth is quite moist. That sort of smell, that's what I really get from the dry down of this scent. It's, the oud is definitely still really, really skanky and quite animalistic. With the rose really being in the background, adding a lot of sweetness as well. The scent is quite sweet and it must be coming from the rose, guys. This also has quite, in the dry down for me at times, a really, really subtle, like wet carpet sort of feel. Uh, and quite like a really subtle, mouldy type of nuance as well. Now those two things that I've just said might not sound very appealing but trust me guys it's it's done in a way which is quite appealing to myself i really like skanky fragrances sometimes it's definitely one you have to sample but you have to be careful this is quite a daring option in my opinion in terms of projection this one was quite a strange one in terms of performance actually i really felt like the projection wasn't massively strong i thought it was more in the moderate range however a lot of people noticed me 
with this scent and I actually got quite a lot of compliments which I was surprised by. I actually was complimented at work as well. From a lot of uh, people that complimented me or noticed me, they made notes of the fact that it could smell a lovely sweet rose, which I was quite surprised by. Whenever I tested this fragrance, I really found the rose to be in the background with the oud being more prominent. It might just be my nose, but a lot of people were noticing the, uh, the rose rather than the oud. And like I've said, I found the projection to be moderate. However, a lot of people were noticing it. So it may be a case of nasal fatigue for myself. In terms of longevity, it was fantastic. I got 10 plus hours. As far as uh, seasons go, this one is best worn during the nighttime, guys. It's a nighttime fragrance and it's best for cool elements. The fall and the winter, this one is fantastic. In terms of occasions, this is a daring choice. So this would be a fragrance you would like to choose when you want to smell different and you want to smell unique. And for me, those would be great for formal occasions. I can see myself wearing this for weddings, uh, just those type of formal occasions when I'm going to be my, when I'm going to be dressed my absolute best, and I want to give off a certain sort of aura. I want to be different. I want to be unique. Then this is the type of scent I'm going to be reaching for. Final overall overall rating, guys, is going to be a four out of five. I'm not going to give it a perfect score, only because I found that this is a scent which I'm not always going to be reaching for. Uh, it's not my absolute favourite rose oud combination fragrance out there, but it's one of the most unique I've tried so far. I love the skanky animalistic oud, but it's a scent which is so daring, uh, so different, that I don't think I'll be reaching for it that much. However, it's great to have a little sample of decan in your collection for those odd occasions when you want to really wear something which is different. This is a, this is a very different oud offering for the western crowd and i think it's definitely one you should sample don't go out and blind buy the whole bottle but definitely do sample let me know what you think so an overall rating is a four out of five guys i hope you enjoyed this review as always guys make sure to leave a like and a comment below and i'll catch you again soon see you later guys